I don't know. She has a heart tentacle, I guess. Five. That's kind of weird. Five. Ten. Ten. Fifteen. Fifteen. Twenty. For a heart tentacle? Well, it's in the shape of a tentacle. <laughs> <laughs> it's in the shape of a tentacle. I don't know what's going on. She reads people's minds with that. Oh. Sure, he does. <laughs> yeah, and this is what she reads. I've seen enough hentai to know where this is going. <laughs> Anyways, we've got 20 here. 20 going once. 20 going twice. Sold for 20. Okay, we've got some. We're very close to the end of the charity stuff. Uh, we'll do it all together. Okay, we have some non Japanese. Stuff. Oh, that's cool. Oh. That is cool. Um, so I can't recommend the art that much, but this is what right a graphic interpretation, uh, sorry, graphic interpretations against censorship. So there's a bunch of comic artists who got together and drew some short strips that all went together in this book, all of which were explaining from an artist's perspective the problems of censorship. For example, the fact that if you try to get cartoon, um, like printed cartoon smut shipped to you in Canada, border agents will occasionally stop it from crossing the border. If you are an artist in America and you draw smut and you cross the border with drawn smut, occasionally border agents will stop you. Why? What legal justification is there for people get turned on when they look at this, we're not going to let it into the country. Because, and I'm sure you're aware of this, people get turned on by looking at shit that's already in the country! <laughs> um, but yeah, there have been cases where Canadian border uh, agents just straight up said, oh, this is not allowed. This is too smutty. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Ah, they were taking it home for themselves. <laughs> <laughs> I have opinions about people saying this sexual thing is wrong because other people are consenting to it, and I don't. Um, Anyway, so this one, this page, has a giant ripped buff uh, cat dude, and a normal human dude, and some normal human chick, and a big-titted alien fish chick. And uh, they're all naked, and there are some amusingly placed sensor bars explaining why censorship is horseshit. <laughs> um, so yeah, I personally would like to buy this for my own uh, purposes. <laughs> uh, no, no, not, not just the porn. Um, anyways, it's got a couple of pictures of people, famous, uh, famous authors, who have had their books banned because censorship and we need to keep children from hearing things. Mark Twain for The Adventures of Huckleberry Finn. Because you're not allowed to say good things about black guys. John Steinbeck for East of Eden, The Grapes of Wrath, and Of Mice and Men. Kurt Vonnegut for Slaughterhouse-Five. Ray Bradbury's Fahrenheit 451, which is Damn. a book about censorship by the government, was censored. Makes sense. By the government. Stephen King's Cujo. Roald Dahl's Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. What? That's bullshit. Yep. Buy um, my notes. <laughs> so yeah, books. So that's, that, I wanted to point that one out because that is really fucking cool. We've also got the hardcover of Immortals, Gods, and Heroes. We've also got Hopeless Savages. Uh, we've also got Warren Ellis's Etheric Mechanics, a graphic novella. If you are into steampunk, you should have an erection. Um, we've got Lock and Key, Welcome to Lovecraft. It is a comic, very well drawn, about... Um, you know, the Lovecraftian horror aspect doesn't really get played up here. Um, it's more ghost story North American approach to horror than English sort of horror, but it's a H.P. Lovecraft influence thing. Eureka! About... Oh, it, it's about the t TV series. It's a comic adaptation. Oh my god. Okay. Marvel and the SJW stuff. Oh, okay. I have no problem with Miss Marvel being what, I, like I East Indian? With all the other ones. Um, I'm that's totally cool with me. The problem is that Marvel has. I think they've stopped now. Yes. They were they were for a while pushing. Um, we're going to do diversity and feminism and 
um, not particularly subtle man-hating bullshit, and we're going to push it in comic form. Like uh, the, the, the fatty SJW comic, Faith, you where mean, she's fat, but she's a superhero. A superhero who does nothing? No, she's fat, but she's super active and powerful and she woman be fat. and a warrior, and, and she runs and jumps and flies. And, but how is she so fat? And her being extremely fat is a major artistic point, and nobody bought the comic strip about the extremely obese woman uh, doing superhero things. And the response was, it's misogyny and fat hate! Probably. You remember what the response was to Ghostbusters flopping? Same, same. <laughs> Misogyny. The reason Ghostbusters flopped is that nerds are men and evil and hate women. And no 